do go through wide and it comes up. Oh no, we've got one up and over in big, big style. That is so freaking hard. You're literally doing, like I said, burpees in the sun. Yo, after eight years, no racing here at IKC, I'm back, baby. All right, so it's the first race back at Ipswich, hardest racing in Australia, arguably. And I'm racing in Tag Restricted Light. Heaps of great kids. I was out there yesterday practicing with them. They're really quick, so I'm gonna go and see how we're gonna do. Been raining, been dry, conditions are always changing. Excited to get out there. Can't wait to see what happens. So we've got changing conditions and a lot of people always say, hey Des, what should I do? Wet, slicks? The best thing you can do is start with no tyres on the car and wait for maybe 20 minutes before you're about to hit the track and make the call. Otherwise, take all your tyres up to the outgrid and slap them on on the grid just before you're about to roll out. It is drying. Looks like we're gonna get a little bit of sunshine. The, this track will dry really quick. So I'm, my prediction is slicks for the first uh, qualifying session to roll out. Never been in the car for a while and all it takes a little bit to get back into the hang of things for today. I think he's got a probably good chance of mid-packing and we'll see if we can race forward from there. Take everyone out, make them pay for all the damages to him. Top set in the right, He's a wily old fox, mate, but he might get up there. Oh, he's at least beating Patrizzi. Oh, he'll drive through them. It's a Tony car. He'll just smash through them and he'll stay straight. Oh, if you want to get ahead of your competition, learn how to brake, how to steer, how to nail your race starts and become victorious, and you want to join the Ultimate Kart Academy. It's an online course that will teach you how to steer, how to brake, how to nail your race starts and become victorious. Victorious. Click the link below to find out more. didn't work out as planned. We uh, sent the card out on slicks and it was, yeah, bad news. All the guys in wet out qualified us. Now we've qualified in 14th, so the strategy that I'm gonna be taking is caution on the outlap. There's still a lot of water around and I'm gonna let some of the big hitters, there's two or three of the really fast competitors right in front of me. They qualified in 10th, 11th, 12th. So I'm gonna let them pave a way through the field for me and I'm just gonna follow them through try to stay clean and get some good points so I can move up the field, ready to attack and win the final. Once you're out, we're on the way for 10 here. Tag restricted line. Down to turn number one they go. Like. Go through wide, it's not often that it comes off. Oh no, we've got one up and over in big, big style. Not quite sure what condition the car's gonna be in. But they work their way back around. Harrison did the quickest lap of the race, so he up another spot there. Billy James were really trying to attack from Jones now also. So, so far we've had two races, both have been excellent for us so far. We qualified poorly in the wet, moved up the, up the grid, came up to fourth and fifth, which has been sweet. Getting back in the seat, I'd kind of forgotten how hard it is. Just saying to somebody, it's like doing burpees out there in the sun, wearing a tracksuit for 12 minutes. I'm coming down the straight, trying to release the pressure out of my arms, and then by the second corner, I've got arm pump again. So just clearly not fit enough. It's way harder than it looks. I'm cruising around about three tenths off the pace, off the quick guys. Changed the car a couple of times, but it's not the go-kart, it's just me. I haven't put in the reps, I haven't put in the work to be as fast as everybody else. Put our best foot forward for the final and see what happens. My plan is always, well, I say this to a lot of people, it's called know your enemy. So I try to pay attention to who's around me, who's quick, who's not. Today, we had some people ladies qualify in front of us with uh, wet tires, so they're kind of like seating ducks. <laughs> I've been lucky enough just to sort of follow, obviously a, a place up for free type of thing because they put the move on. But in the last race, one of the really quick drivers in our category, he'll probably go on to win today, uh, he put a silly move in, came together, pushed the guy off the track, which was okay. He, he went for the move, it was legit. But then he went off the track and by the time he came back on, I was like, oh, dude, I'm not going to pass this guy. I just sort of sat and waited and then I was like, oh, okay. He's going to push forward anyway, so I would have just been holding myself up and him. So 
If you know your enemy, you know who to pass, who not to pass, who to go with, who's going to like pass and do crazy maneuvers, who's a loose cannon. So study the field that you're in and, and play everybody accordingly. That is so freaking hard. You're literally doing, like I said, burpees in the sun. I'm freaking hot, tired. I'm hanging on to it. My arms are killing. I just want to rip all my clothes off and grab in an ice bath. It was so much fun racing again, but yeah, I really need a lot more practice, a lot more. I don't know how many laps you got to do. I'll probably get in the car once a week, once a fortnight, but literally I've, to catch these kids, I got to be going three days a week, I reckon. I, as you get older, you just get a little slower, a little rustier. And familiarity with the track, I'm, I'm just making mistakes. I'm up on my microphone and then I'll blow it down at turn 12. So I'll get up at one section and just waste it on another section. So it's, it's just me, I think the cart's fine, steer's good, power's good. I nah, just not quite getting the corners, just perfect, which you gotta do at this level. I got him at the start, he got shoved out a bit wide. I just took the opportunity as best I can. But when he came through, I didn't put up much of a fight because I was only gonna cost myself more time to the other guys that I, I pretty much got their pays. So I tried to go with him as, as quickly as I could or as, as for as long as I could. But yeah, they just sort of gapped me. And then there was another opportunity to catch the other guy, uh, Mordo, but he pulled away too. He was making mistakes as well. I went the better guy past him and settled him down and he took off. I'm just gonna to try to work on turn 12. I fixed a couple of things, but just not every lap. So, you know what I repeated to myself that time was, do the, I feel great, I feel strong. And it helped. Rather than saying, oh, my arms are hurt. Like, I'm literally tired, huh? Because it's later in the day. I went better and I started nutting out problems. Feeling the car, feeling my ribs in the, into the seat on certain corners, like onto the main straight. Instead of turning more, just leaning more and makes the cart sort of bite in on those outside tires. On the far hairpin, I was braking and when I got it sweet, it came off like a jet. I felt it instantly and my micron just went doom. Uh, like straight down into the 49s, which is where I've been trying to get all day. I'm hovering around a 50 flat. And that far hairpin, and then I tried it on the first hairpin, the same technique of braking. And then just after I turn in, just sort of come off the brake as I feed a bit more steering on at the apex and then squeeze the throttle on on the exit and it just went. The timing was perfect, but I only did it once, and then I was like, shit, that was, that was excellent. I'll, go, I'll do that again. Tried it again, it wasn't quite as good, but still better than before, and then I tried it on another hairpin that I thought I was going a bit, uh, I needed to improve on myself. I'm just not going, I think I could do this better, but I went in too hot, and it just, just slid and killed the momentum, so I lost that little game, but I'm nutting out the problems. Being around those better drivers, I'm pushing way harder than normal. Uh, well, I want to catch and I'm trying to win, but I've got to find three tenths and three tenths every lap to stay just to get close to them. And then I've got to try to hit them with a dive bomb on the last lap, like a bit of a desperate, which I will do if I'm in striking distance down at turn 12. That's my number one go-to because everyone leaves a little bit of door open there and you can just fire it in and fire it in deep. Go right past their front tire. So if they turn in, they're just seeing side pod and rear wheel. And then it's boom, you're onto the straight over the checkered flag, baby, P1. That's what I'm going for. Whether I get it or not, who knows. Two hours later. All right, mate, it's finals time. Sun's gone down. I haven't changed the cart. I'm just going for it. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. It was going off a little bit earlier, so I feel like these cold conditions will suit me. Whether I can bring my A game and catch those kids, I'm about to find out, so let's go get it. Podium, third, second. If not, if not podium, definitely a top five. He come out as a retirement too late. He should, he should still, still be racing. He's too quick. I think he's definitely got a podium. I reckon he'll get a podium, either third or second. Hey, he'll win. He'll get him. He won. Straight to the top. He's got the pace. 
Some of the biggest mistakes I see guys making is changing the cart too much. Here today I've hardly made any changes at all. I'm just getting better because I'm not driving on the, like at my best. So you've got to highlight that. If there's stuff in you that you need to improve, fix that first and then change the go-kart. Because once you start driving faster, the cart will understeer more or less, depending on the speed that you enter the corners. So in this final, it's a bit of a longer race, but it's cooled down. So I've just come up to my start pressures from earlier today, which is 9.5 on the left side and 10 on the right side. Obviously we do a lot more work at this track on that left side of the cart. So I want to jazz that pressure up, uh, down, sorry and a little bit up on the right side to, to balance out when they're hot. I changed the gearing. I just thought if I'm running with the lead pack, a little bit more top end would be better. So I went down another sprocket. It seems fine. If I get the corners right, uh, the rest will take care of itself. Oh, dude, it was awesome. Our cart was good. I didn't get a like, cracking start into fourth or nothing. So I couldn't really hold them off. Maybe it came on a little late, like best lap was last lap, but I just felt that was me because I was in the slipstream with the other guys. Yeah, Williams got me pulled away. Pretty much everyone that passed me, I just sort of tried to tack on the back of. Just play the smart game, see if I could get closer. Like I couldn't quite catch Cody, but with Williams battling with him, it got me back in the game. So I just sort of just, uh, yeah, just tried to race smart and didn't quite have the leader's pace this weekend. But that's cool. There's a... Um, Always next week, so yeah, come back bigger, better, stronger next time. Uh, biggest takeaway, well, obviously more laps and a bit more fitness. I reckon I was talking to John Target, who's an absolute guru in this uh, karting community, and he said, oh, look, stub axles, they probably need a bit of extra length, and there's a little kit, you can get that for your Tony cart. And I had one on board, and I didn't think to put it on. It would just make the cart so much lighter. So maybe I had a little bit too much fatigue. The final, I probably could have put my standard back hubs, standard rear back hubs on like I had this morning, just to light the rears up a bit better. I felt the car was excellent. Maybe a two, just to keep with them off the hairpins. You'll see in the video, I was getting dropped and I was coming back at them too late. So I, th I think the gear ratio I found, it was a little too low for today. But yeah, man, it was, it was a sick day. It was good racing with the kids. Um, if I had more pace, I would have been able to race forward. I was a little bit of a sitting duck. I was purposely not battling with the guys who were past me. I knew they were quicker. So the, the best thing for me was just to sort of try and go with them if I could. Yeah, in the video you can see I get dropped pretty easily. So I just need those extra couple of tents. McNaughty's on the tools. Oi. <laughs> what do you got there? Birthday cake. It was my birthday and one of the mums made it for me. Oh. So everyone's having some birthday cakes. Anyone else? All right, so that's it for racing for today. It was a huge day. The competition's great here at Ipswich, really testing me out. I was probably that three to four tenths off, which is cool. 
Uh, I did my best, absolutely just learning every session. Probably could have tweaked a couple of things and that's what I'd do next time and obviously uh, you'd start at such a higher level. I'm, I'm stoked with the day. All right guys, that's a wrap for the racing here today. But for all you guys following along at home, if you want to learn more about how to drive your go-kart, how to repair your engines, how to maintain everything, a race winning standard, join the Ultimate Kart Academy right now and click that link below. It's awesome and I'll see you in there.